Commissioner, welcome back to Texas GOP Vote. We're glad to have the access and be able to talk to you again. And I appreciate you coming back to Houston to see yes. us. So, uh, I understand uh, you've had a little bit of a change in your job as, as land commissioner now. and You're now the manager, for lack of a better word, of the Alamo. That's right. I, I guess the land office must be doing something well because we uh, have apparently developed a reputation as the agency you can send things to that need, uh, that need some help. And the legislature last session made us the uh, responsible state agency for the Alamo. And they directed us uh, to work out an arrangement with the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, the DRT. And they have been managing the Alamo since the early 1900s and doing a pretty good job. But the Alamo is now at a point where it needs a little more than what the DRT is able to provide. In the land office, we have engineers, we have construction uh, uh, skills, we have legal skills, we have financial skills. So we are working out and are very close to working out an arrangement with the DRT to manage the Alamo while still utilizing the services of those ladies who have preserved this iconic treasure for over 100 years. As a connoisseur of Texas history, that must be it's quite fantastic. a thrill for you. It's fantastic. Uh, it makes, you know, still to this day, uh, you know, having grown up on David Crockett, played by Thess Parker and all that, some of which was not historically accurate, still to this day, I tear up when I read and, and uh, view some of the, the, the history, evidence of history in San Antonio uh, and the stuff in our archives. Uh, you know, it's a, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Yeah. Well, it reminds me uh, of something that I've heard you talk about before, that Texas has a very severe illegal immigration problem, and it's been around for quite some time. Yeah, we have a long history of illegal immigration in Texas. As a matter of fact, the first illegal immigrants were people who, many of whom looked like me, blue eyes, uh, brown or blonde hair. Uh, when Texas was part of Mexico, to come here lawfully, you came being sponsored by an impresario, such as Stephen F. Austin. If you didn't come sponsored by Impresario, you were an illegal. And many folks, you know, instead of the crossing of the Rio Grande, which we think of today, were crossing the Sabine and the Red River, coming here illegally, uh, and not being sponsored by you know uh, some of the Impresarios at the time. So I always like to describe, you know, well, this is nothing new. It just changes which river we're crossing. Uh, but uh, you know. We have uh, documents in our land office archives that are really on point, and uh, one of the documents we have is the register registro of Stephen F. Austin's a leather-bound volume, very large, that was pinned in the 1820s by Stephen F. Austin. He signed the entry Estevan. It's handwritten in Spanish by Anglos, and they had only been here a short time. And they knew that if they were going to succeed in commerce in Texas in the 1820s, they had to speak, read, write the language of commerce, which was Spanish. There's a lesson for today. If you want to succeed in commerce in Texas today, you need to read, write, uh, and speak the language of commerce, which today is English. What was applicable in 1820 is applicable in 2012. It just happens to be a different language. We have another wonderful document. It's a board of land commissioners of the Bear District, Bear County, where those who had served in our army went to report their service to prove up their service and get their entitlement to land. And we have names on there like Juan Seguin. You know, he was a hero of San Jacinto. He'd been at the Alamo. He was ordered to leave. He showed up at San Jacinto and helped carry the day against Santa Ana. And we on the same page, we have uh, David Crockett. Of course, he was dead, but he was signed in by his son, Robert, and they were there to prove up their service. But there's a column at the top that says nativity. And if you go down there, we have Tejanos and Texians. Everywhere there's a Tejano, it says native. Everywhere there's a Texian, such as Crockett, it says immigrant. We were the first immigrants, and we were the first illegal immigrants. Well, today, of course, we have a, what may perceive as a very serious problem with illegal immigration. We, and one aspect of that that doesn't get touched on, I don't think, in I've heard you talk about this, is the basically no man's land that's created yes. down there and its impact on our Texas resources. Well, you know, I'm responsible as land commissioner for state uh, minerals. Uh, we have some along the Rio Grande Valley and the Rio Grande boundary. Uh, we have a serious problem with uh, theft of product, whether it's oil or condensate or equipment. Much of that is uh, our own leases where we have a royalty interest. So they're in effect stealing from the school children of Texas because our royalty interest is dedicated to public education. 
and on those uh, you know very remote leases we also have criminal activity whether it's uh, stealing a product as I mentioned drug running coyotes uh, taking uh, you know illegals back and forth and law enforcement down there is spread thin or in some cases not too cooperative so that's a that's a national security problem mm -hmm. and we think of immigration and border security in some uh, you know area but we don't think about what we're losing in one of our resources and that's oil and gas production matter, matter of fact we've had uh, oil stolen from mexico and uh, you, you know mexico they just go drill into a pemex pipeline and put it in a truck and they'll drive it sell it in the u.s and then we have stuff that's stolen from the u.s that's sold in mexico there's a lot of uh, criminal activity and it's dangerous and it's 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 a national security issue in the land office we're putting a task force together to try to come up with a state solution for that using DPS and rangers and the oil and gas companies and the land office and the railroad commission and we hope to be announcing something on that in a couple of months. I look forward to talking yeah. to you about that when, yeah. when you get to that point. You also, um, speaking of natural resources, I understand that Texas is now positioned to yes. uh, may have yeah. quite an economic impact in some new, new right. finds. Right. Tell us about that. Texas is 172 million acres, that iconic shape that you're familiar with. Uh, I manage, and the land office manages, about 13 million acres. Not all of that is surface. Most of it is minerals or submerged. But we have a track in Hudspeth County near Sierra Blanca that has uh, heavy metals. And there are two kinds of heavy metals. Uh, one is the more desirable, more rare. And China has essentially a, 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 almost a monopoly on the very rare heavy metals we have found, or one of our lessees has found, heavy metals in sufficient quantities in Texas that would be tremendous impact on, on our security. And the heavy metals are used in batteries, high-tech batteries, and we talk about electric vehicles, and if you can make the batteries, the batteries are the problem with electric vehicles, even in your, your Blackberry or your I, I whatever, these heavy metals are needed in missile guidance systems, national defense, electronics, and the fact that China has had almost a monopoly on it, and we now believe we have deposits in far west Texas that could change the national security picture and also generate tremendous amounts of royalty income for the state of Texas. That, that's it, exciting. It is What's exciting. the timeline on developing We that? We think, uh, you know, they could be in production within uh, two years. And that would change the it would change the landscape on a on a very crucial mineral that's needed for our future and for our national defense. One last thing uh, that we had talked about earlier on the energy in Texas and whether we have enough yeah. energy in Texas. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what happened during the drought last summer and the heat wave and, yeah. and how we were able to sustain our grid? Our we have grid a couple of time. things that are pressing issues in Texas. And, you know, I'm running in the Republican primary, and in the Republican primary we talk about a lot of issues that are very important to me. You know, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-Second Amendment. We talk about all those issues. They're extremely important. But there are things we are not talking about. The availability of water for our continued population growth, the availability of energy. Uh, we came close last August to where we were going to have rolling blackouts across Texas, our brownouts. Uh, we have an issue with energy generation and transmission. We need to be talking about those things. Uh, the water, the drought actually affects uh, generation of energy because you need cooling water. So we've got to start looking at how do we manage the resources, the water resources we have, whether it's groundwater, whether it's surface water, interbasin transfers, uh, you know, usage of groundwater, conservation is a big part of it. And then how do we ensure that we have enough electricity to, to meet the growing economy in Texas? So we peaked at 68,000 megawatt uh, peak demand last August, I think second or third. We're getting very close to where our peak demands are close to our peak capacity to generate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that we're not talking about. I mean, I know it's not the sexy issue that gets everybody going in the Republican primary, but it's things that leadership, which is what Republicans should be able to do, which is what I have an ex experience in doing in the Marine Corps as an officer uh, in the Senate uh, and as land commissioner. Uh, we need to start talking about uh, many more issues than we're talking about today. And I think you mentioned an alternative energy source that was actually instrumental in helping yeah, us keep Yeah, you know, we, we as Republicans up. are an advocate of a market-based economy mm -hmm. and not picking winners and losers. And we frequently malign some of the green technologies out there. 
but last summer in August, were it not for wind power that was producing along the coastal bend in San Patricio and Nueces and uh, those counties down there, we would have had blackouts in Texas because the wind in August in the afternoon was a tremendous benefit to maintaining uh, our generation capacity on the grid. Were it not for wind, you would have had your lights go out. Well, having grown up in Rockport, I can attest to that that's steady right. wind. <laughs> yeah, you, you know the coastal bend. That's why they have all the, the you know, sailing races down there, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, it was a big it was a big factor. Well, Commissioner, thank you again for taking the time and giving access to yep, the readers of Texas vote. GOP vote. Is there anything else that you'd like to say today before we conclude this? Well, uh, I hope the uh, folks in Texas will learn more about what I do at the land office and all the, the things that we're involved in. Uh, it's the greatest gig in Texas. I have people that work for me that make even me look good. <laughs> well, I don't think that's very hard to do. Yeah. But thank you very thank much you. for your time. and right. look forward thank to you, following Bob. your campaign as it develops. Okay.